Hi everybody, it's Carla with Cobweb Corner and welcome to Floss Tube number 29. Um, it's been a couple weeks since my last video. I have been super busy with kind of good and bad things. Um, some of you who have been with me a while know my dad uh, is elderly and has not been feeling very well and he had a rough couple of weeks. I had to drive to where they live um, a couple times and was pretty worried about him for a while, but he seems to be doing better. They took him off some medication that I think was causing a lot of the problems and every day he seems to be getting a little stronger and a little better. So I've been uh, uh, kind of away from things a little bit. Uh, they live about 45 minute drive from here and I've been over there at least uh, three times I think in the last uh, two or three weeks. So. Um, hoping that he just feels better and that that can uh, stop for a while. Um, also, my husband was in India, not last week, but the week before for a uh, full week. And next week, he's going to Florida and I am going to join him for a couple days. He's leaving on Sunday and it won't be back until Friday. And I am going to leave on Tuesday afternoon and arrive uh, kind of later in the evening, Tuesday and then uh, stay at the hotel where he's with him, uh, where he'll be for business and um, be there two days. I'll be pretty much on my own. Uh, he has suppers with uh, clients and coworkers and stuff, but I'm hoping to have supper together one time. And then the place we're staying has a beautiful spa, so lucky me. Uh, we've been married for 27 years. Our anniversary was uh, just a few days ago. It was October 24th. And in all the years that um, we've been married, I've only traveled with him on a business trip once. Uh, years and years ago, um, I went to Texas for a weekend when he was there for two weeks straight. And he travels quite a bit. Um, unless, of course, you count the fact that we actually moved to France for two years for his job. And I traveled with him there too, but um, so, He's kind of, you know, getting close to retirement, another uh, three to five years yet. And I thought, if I'm going to go to some of these cool places, I better get going. And, and um, you know, at least we have the hotel room paid for us. And he gets his food paid when he's traveling for work. So, you know, why not join him a couple of times if I can? So I'm going to be going to Florida. And um, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's cold here. And when I checked down in Florida, it was still like 83 degrees. Uh, they are expecting rain the days that I'm there, but I don't really care. I just want some nice warm weather. We have snow here. It's been icy already. It's, I think it's going to be a pretty fun winter. Um, what else have I been doing? Um, I finished my book, my Audible book called Secondhand Curses by, let's see, Drew Hayes. And I really liked it. It was very, very different. Hello, Bo. Um, Bo's been very clingy today, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I really liked the book. It was uh, not great, but it was it was good, and it was a great book to read while I was cross stitching or to listen to while I was cross stitching. And it was kind of a take. It was kind of like um, Once Upon a Time that show, where different the the each chapter was a a story about a different um, uh, character in a Oh, what am I trying to say? In a fairy tale. So, you know, they had a chapter on Pinocchio and they had a chapter on Beauty and the Beast and, and things like that. So, um, so it was, it was kind of neat. It was a fun read. Um, I haven't started a new book yet. I binge watched, um, leave my necklace alone. <laughs> I binge watched Big Little Lies. I had not ever seen it. So I started watching season one. And I was really intrigued when I noticed that season two had Meryl Streep in it. And it was a great show. My husband was kind of interested and I'm like, I can't quit watching. I got to just watch every episode. I think I binge, binge watched all, both episodes in three days. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I, so I, I, I did that instead of reading and it also kind of impacted on my stitching time. But it was also football weekend, so I did get some stitching done. And, oh, you got to get down. For so, And I have a finish since I talked to you last. So um, Cobweb Corner sponsored the Sweeping Cobwebs um, Stitch Along by 
uh, Prairie Schooler. The chart was by Prairie Schooler. And mine is finished. Isn't it awesome? And I love, love, love the fabric. This is 28 Count Dense Fog by Wichelt. And I am really happy. I just used the called for colors. And there was only uh, five DMC colors. And one of the colors, the green, is only used in the eyes, cat, cat's eyes and the witch's eye. Um, so I'm just really happy with it. A number of people in our group have um, fully finished theirs and a number have finished and some haven't even started. But I'm going to share uh, some of the results and some of the finishes with you at the end of the video. So next, I didn't do a new start, but I went back to a previous work in progress. And if I can find it, I will insert a photo of where I was before I uh, picked it up this week here. Okay, so that's where I was. And here is where I am now. Isn't it look great? This is a big, big, big design. Um, it, it's got, it's gonna come, go up to about here probably. It's got not, nothing more down here except a, a sunflower border. And then, of course, there's a lot more motifs. But look at that little bee. Isn't that just the cutest thing? I am having so much fun uh, stitching it. I am stitching it on um, 28 count lamb's wool. I think it called for 32 or 36 count. And that was a little bit too small for me. I'm stitching over two. And I'm using all the called for threads. And I love it. I just, I just really love it. So... That's where I'm at right now. I, I got quite a bit done. I really like designs like this that have a lot of negative space where there's no stitching because, and especially if they have little motifs, so you can say, okay, I finished this flower. Okay, I finished the beehive. Okay, I finished the bee. And I kind of like that because you feel like you're not just stitching and not seeing um, you know, anything get finished. So the core, this is by Core Ebedi Core, and they have... Um, that designer has um, a series of designs in the um, farms collection. And there, there's a pumpkins farm, strawberries farm, lavender farm, Christmas farm, sunflower farms. Uh, I can't remember if there's more, but they're all kind of the same thing. Uh, just a bunch of the colors of the theme and a bunch of really cute motifs. So. I'm really glad to be back at that. Um, okay, let's announce last week's winner. The question was, are you a town girl, a city girl, or a farm girl? And we only had six entries, so I guess the giveaway wasn't very intriguing. I actually love this book. I think it's a great collection. We're giving away Kathy Livingston's Cross Stitch Artistry, and it's got quite a few designs in there. And the winner is Lisa Powell and she said she was a farm girl. So Lisa, I don't know if I have your address or not. If you see this, uh, let me know and I will get this sent off to you. All right, what have I been doing business-wise? Um, I have just, I've been doing a bunch of marketing is what I've been working on and trying to come up with ways to get the word out that Cowboy Corner is here and that we're worth giving a try and also come and try to have some things that might be different from what you can get at other sites to uh, make it worth coming into Cabo Corner like our loyalty reward point program and stuff like that. So one of the things I did based on um, a comment from one of my customers, Noelle, was to maybe come up with a floss variety pack. So we do not carry all the lines of floss. I just can't, can't do it on my own. It's too much investment and just too much uh, inventory to have on hand. But uh, just in the last few months, I've started carrying um, Gentle Art sampler threads and Classic Color Works, and then I was already carrying Weeks Dye Works and DMC. So what I've done is created a floss variety pack that will try to change as close to every month as I can. And it will have two colors of each of the types of floss that I carry. 
and um, I can't remember, I didn't write down what I'm charging. It's a slight discount um, off of what I would charge if you were purchasing those items individually. So um, I'll put a link below to where you can find the floss pack and it will always be um, at the top of every kind of floss. So like if you went into General Arts Floss, the floss variety pack would be the first thing that you see. So I'm trying that. I only sold one so far, so um, got to get the word out about that. And honestly, I don't know if people, I show what colors you're going to get, so it's not a surprise. So I don't know if people would be more inclined to purchase more if it was a surprise or if it wasn't. Um, or if you know, because if you even own one of the DC, DMC colors, you might say, well, I don't need any more DMC, so I'm not going to get that, you know, so I don't know. Um, the Gentle Art threads are the 10-yard skeins, so they're a great deal, and you're getting a little bit of a discount by buying uh, all eight colors, so uh, the DMC 10-yard skein, or the Gentle Arts 10-yard skeins are $3.60 retail, and a 5-yard skein is two fifty. so you save quite a bit already. Um, so, and if you have an opinion, if you'd rather have a surprise rather than knowing what you're getting, um, let me know, let me know that maybe I can try both. I don't know. Um, the other thing I've been doing is going back and scanning some of my really old charts, um, or charts that are, you know, not so old, but that I originally entered when I first started. So back when I first started was like, I, I, I started selling on message boards and things like that in 1999-2000 and bandwidth was a huge thing so we tried to get our images as tiny as possible and a lot of my images from those early days are so small compared to um, my other images because now bandwidth isn't such a big deal. I still have a limit on my bandwidth but um, I hardly ever go over it and it's just much more important. It's, a lot of the charts too have such a small, small little four by six photo, and I would scan the whole chart before the whole front of the chart, and then you're expected to look at the detail in a very small image of just a portion of that picture. So it's really time consuming, but I went in and I um, rescanned the color charts books and. Lizzie Kate to give bigger photos. And that's just something I'm gonna to have to work on over time because it is very time consuming. And I have oh, like 5,000 charts in, currently in my inventory. Of course, every, anything new I get in, it gets scanned in a nice big photo. Um, I've also been giving a lot of thought to the jewelry and jewelry supply side of my business. I have pretty much decided that I am going to not make jewelry anymore. and just devote myself to the cross stitch side but I have about 600 pieces of jewelry already made I have some very expensive things that either need to be made into jewelry or try to get my money back on and then I have thousands and thousands of dollars of loose beads so it's gonna be just this huge project um, I am getting a little older and my like I said my husband's gonna retire you know, within the next uh, five years for sure. And the thought of trying to get um, rid of the inventory for three different businesses is pretty uh, scary. So I'm gonna try now, I've started listing seed beads in my Etsy supply shop. I have a lot of um, really good quality seed beads. And if, you know, if you're interested in those for your stitching projects, those are in my Etsy shop. Um, and then I, I just haven't done anything with my jewelry yet and I have to figure out, figure out what I'm going to do there. Um, for the business topic for today, um, since I did do a lot of marketing, one of the things I did was to actually try to create a good ad. And of course my ads are never going to be professional, like, you know, a big, a big corporation or anything. But the importance of most of my ads are just a collage, a square collage of different cross-stitch charts. And it's a single image and it says, you can find these and more at cowboycorner.com. And it's really important when you do an ad that you tell a story. 
So um, I'm going to insert an ad here. I posted it on YouTube already, but um, let me know what you what you think. And I had this ad running um, for about two and a half weeks up until Halloween. So here's the here's the, it's only 24 seconds long. So here's the ad. <laughs> Okay, so I was pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, mistakes I made, well, first of all, I think it does tell a story. It like kind of like, you know, it doesn't have to be scary to try out a new a new cross-stitch store and then you go on and, and say why it's not, not scary and then um, try to get some benefits of coming to Cobweb Corner. Mistakes I made was that cobwebcorner.com was not on every single slide. My husband watched it and the first thing he said was, I don't really know where to find you. So and I said, well, it's right there on the last slide. But of course, not everybody watches the last slide. And um, so I need to, get, need to make sure that everywhere I can that I put in um, where to find me. Um, I've also, now, how much did I spend on that? Like I said, I advertised it for a couple of weeks and at least and I boosted it on Facebook and I boosted it on Instagram and then I figured out how to get my ads to show on YouTube and that's not going very well yet um, at first it was showing ads on you know YouTube channels that I would never ever get a sale at and I immediately like in one day racked up ten dollars worth of fees and and wasn't shown a single place so I'm trying to get it down to other you know really popular floss tube channels or um, channels about cross stitch or people with an interest of cross stitch and only show on YouTube because I think this is one of the best places to find um, to find new customers so this ad turned out uh, the results for Facebook and Instagram turned out fabulous I did not get a lot of sales. In fact, my sales for the last couple of weeks have been almost like zero, but not well. No, that's not true. That's not true. They've been down quite a bit. And, um, but this, this uh, ad did a couple things. First of all, it got over like, I don't know, seven to 8,000 views, which for me is huge. And then, it got me a bunch of people to join my Facebook page. So I'm now getting pretty close to 3,000 subscribers on my Facebook page. And um, that is, I'm able to do that because whenever anybody likes a post or a video that's been shared, so let's say they're not a member of my Facebook page, then, um, but they like the post, they see it somewhere because they're public posts and they like it, I have the option to invite them to join my page so I always invite anyone who likes um, like some you know likes a post or a video or something like that and a good percentage of them then will accept the invitation and join the page so that's really good um, also part of marketing is you have to see something on average at least seven times before you engage in it so I have to get my message to the same people who I think are are good uh, good prospects for for customers at least seven times in the same you know area. So I'm gonna try to continue focusing ads and um, doing that. I've always done it on Facebook, but trying to get that to where they see this and see see the name Cobweb Corner Cross Stitch at least seven times, and then if the person's at all interested, then the average. Uh, average viewing then maybe they'll give it a click and give us a try so what did that cost me well advertising is super expensive I used to do paid per click ads in Google and someday I'll talk a little bit more on that but at at my prime I was spending about nine to twelve hundred dollars a month in advertising which is huge 
And a lot of that was for jewelry. And you can imagine trying to bid on clicks on Google for something as broad as a jewelry category. Um, and I had, you know, you have to do, when you advertise on Google, every time somebody clicks on it, you pay. And to get positioned on the first page, you have to bid quite high. So just to get positioned on the first page for cross stitch, I would have to pay like 75 cents every time somebody clicked on something. Well, that's just not, not feasible. And it used to also be that Google would let me do the shopping. You know, when you go into Google and you can say, uh, shop for this item you're looking for, that used to be free. I used to be able to upload my entire inventory to Google Shopping at no cost. And then they changed that to a pay-per-click. So I would upload my inventory, you'd see it in the shopping feed, and then if you clicked on it, I'd get charged. But then you're actually seeing it, you see the price, so it's a little bit better, but it got so expensive. I was spending um, five or $600 a month on Google advertising and not increasing my, my profits at all. So I'm trying to get more focused on um, just the social media stuff where I can handle the message and really handle, well, I could with Google too, but um, giving this a try. And so this particular ad cost me about $300 and that was just over two, two weeks. But the cost per engagement was really reasonable. Now, can I do that every month? No, I can't. Um, but it's just one of the things to, to think about and to try to get the word out that Cobweb Corner is a great place to shop. So um, I'm also gonna show you here my what I'm working on for my upcoming wish list ad and if you have comments on this I haven't I haven't finished it yet but the story I want to tell is that we have the ability for you to create a wish list and then make it public and share it so um, if you want what I'm trying to say is what do you want for Christmas well of course you want cross stitch stash and you can get it by sharing your wish list um, from Cobweb Corner with people who are going to be buying you Christmas gifts. So that video is here. So um, if you have any comments on that, leave them below. I would love to hear them. Um, I also would love to know when you think I should start showing that ad. Should I wait till after Thanksgiving? Um, is that too late for people to get to know Cobweb Corner and come in and get their wish list created? Um, but of course, nobody wants to hear about Christmas yet. So trying to figure out the timing on that. So that's what I spent a lot of time doing this week, and that is... Uh, business topic. I rambled a little bit. I apologize for that. What else is going on? Um, speaking of Halloween, we had our sweeping cob, we have, still have, our sweeping cobweb stitch along. And that's a prairie schooler chart. I showed you my finish at the beginning of this video. And um, we have a number of people who have finished. Quite a few have fully finished. Um, and some people haven't even started. I think we have 67 members. And um, I wanted to, since Halloween just happened and things are getting a little bit slower in that group, I want to show you a video here of a few of the finishes from, and shows you some of the fabric choices. There's one in there that um, she hasn't finished yet, but she had a really unique fabric choice and um, shows you some of the color changes and things like that. So here's that.
awesome. I just think it's so neat to um, go back and actually share and see uh, the results of all the hard work that went in in that group. And we're getting ready to start our next stitch along, which I shouldn't have picked a Halloween theme. I don't know what I was thinking, but we're stitching. Um, you can stitch any of the pixies from Nora Corbett's Bewitching Pixie series. And I will put a post be uh, link below for to where you can see the 12 pixies that are included. And I think we have about 42 members in that group so far. I'll put also put a link to that group below if you want to join us. The official start date for that stitch along is going to be December 1st. So we would love to have some more members and have you stitch with us. And um, I'll give you a, hopefully include your, your item in the finishes when that ends, which I'm not sure how long, when that will be. Um, the, right now, the, the idea of starting another another project is a little daunting, but um, I'm going to do it. I also haven't picked out which pixie I'm going to stitch yet. I kind of want all 12 pixies to be represented, and nobody's picked three of them yet. So I'm feeling like, you know, the sponsor, maybe I should pick one of those poor little left out pixies. <laughs> So we'll, we'll see which one I choose. Um, of course, the one I really want to stitch is being stitched by four, four or five people already, but um, we'll see. Um, the giveaway for this week. The giveaway for this week is the um, Strawberry Shortcake design from Glendon Place, and it's part of the Amazing Dessert Series. And I'm going to show you another video. This is like the video of videos. <laughs> it's short also, but it's another video of all of the designs in the Amazing Dessert series. So here's the video here. tiramisu i love the baked alaska um, i love the plum pudding the purples so you're if you want to win the um strawberry shortcake chart then just comment with what which of the, 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 the oh my goodness which of the desserts in the series was your favorite from the video so just uh, say my favorite dessert is baked Alaska or my favorite dessert is strawberry shortcake you know things like that and I'll draw that name that on my next video um, okay new inventory like I said in previous vi videos I am really trying to stop buying it's not working very well um, but I did get an order from Hoffman and I'm going to just show you some of the la -di da charts that uh, I have a lot of them are back in these are ones that were back in stock but I haven't had them in my shop since like 2010 2012 things like that so um, I also have more to enter that have never been listed in my shop but these are the ones that are back in stock this is yellow bird and old crow and my little sampler just says worked by and then in the year. And the designer for La Di Da is Lori Markovic. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are blue. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And instead of the word sunshine, it puts little sun icons. 
and instead of the word um, blue, it has bluish uh, clouds. It's really clever. This one has been pot so popular, and I have not had it in stock for a long time. It's something wicked. Something wicked this way comes. The Raven, Once Upon a Midnight Dreary, While I Pondered, Weak and Weary, Edgar Allan Poe. The Tote and Hare. Love this primitive design. It's got a basket of carrots. And I really like this one. Peace to all who enter here. The ABD, ABCD sampler. The alphabet sampler. Wicked Witch. Ding dong, the Wicked Witch is, is dead. And Ode to Summer, and it says, The trees were green, the sun was hot, sometimes I worked and sometimes not. Now, I ordered two of these, and Hoffman only shipped one, so I don't know if they'll be getting more in stock or not. Spot the Cat. And I really like this one. Why... Why did you, it's called Good Morning Merry Sunshine. Why did you wake so soon? You chase all the stars and shine away the moon. And that's it. That's it for the Lottie Da that's back in stock. And I'll put a link down below to all the Lottie Da's um, charts. Then the older designer or older charts that I want to share to you are from Forever in My Heart. Now the newest one I saw was from Let's see, get their newest number. 2007. So I, I don't know if they're still publishing or not. But I want to show you um, what I have in stock. It's not very many from these. So this is Forever, Forever My Heart. I'm trying to find out who the designer is. Linda Orm, or Orme, O-R-M-E. Um, so this... I have one of these, and this is so cool. So this is called Clip Bites. Um, things to do, to do, stitch, 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 and joy. The best joy is shared. So see those? And those are little tiny clipboards. So this is a complete kit. It's got um, the fabric, the clipboards, and pink floss. Of course, you could use any color floss you want. But isn't that just so cool that it includes those little tiny clipboards? And are there two clipboards? No. There is only one, one clipboard. No, there are two. There's two clipboards. This one's just a lot smaller. So the, the polka dot one and then the striped one. And you get both of those. So I just think that's so clever. Um, this is called Forever primitive January and February and this was a chart that came either pre-owned or from a store that was out of business and you see it has a spot on it now that damage will be explained in the description of this chart so when you shop at Cabo Corner there will be a condition statement on every every chart in red always read the condition statement if it says new it's new Otherwise, it's going to tell you it's pre-owned or it's damaged in some way. Tag it, you're, you're it, snow. That's from a series. This says something very white and cold. Another one of those. Forever Primitive, March and April. The Tag It series, uh, Love. Whoa, there's no photo. Oh, no. Well, that's not going to be very helpful. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the primitive, forever primitive May and June. And again, same place. It must have got some kind of water damage. So it's going to look like on the inside. And obviously, these are priced accordingly. Tag it series luck. And it says, a force that brings good fortune. Lobo. 
And then wish. Deepest desires of one's heart, a longing for something, a dream or desire for oneself or someone else. And they have a needle rolls series. <sighs> Down you go. Dream. You can make it into a needle roll or, or frame it. And imagine. And then from the Tag It series, um, Home and Hearth. So it has family and home. Yeah, we've been doing this all day today. I think I've put her down in my um, stu in my office about a hundred times. This is the Forget Me Not needle roll. The Wish needle roll. And the Happy needle roll. Forever Freedom. Red Hat Ladies, this has to be from a while ago. Charming Sampler, this one's gonna be hard to see. Not a very good photo. It says, has the alphabet and the name and her work in the year of. You are my sunshine. This would look so cute in a kid's room or a daycare. Learned art. Schools are the seed plots of all learned arts, and doubt and rich our heads, our tongues, and our hearts. Nobody wants to see you like that. All right, that is it. So that is Forever in My Heart by uh, Linda Orm or Orme. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. So I think that's it. I have a writing lesson in about um, oh, a half hour. It's my first writing lesson in probably five weeks. I had one writing lesson and the person didn't, the instructor didn't show up. She forgot. So that was a little disappointing. And then um, I had, then she was gone for two weeks and then I was gone the next week. And then it was like two more weeks after that before I finally contacted her and got that they got the uh, lesson set up so I'm really hoping I am as excited about it I'm not as excited about it right now because it's wintry out it's snowy and cold and when we get there we have to go out in the fields and get the horse and I'm we do have an inside arena to uh, do the lesson but I'm just not sure how to dress and I just don't know if it'll be the same experience, but we'll see. I'm hoping it is. I think after this, I still have four lessons left that I purchased in my package. So um, I'm hoping it, I just get back into it and we can get more back on a regular scale a schedule. Oh my gosh. I have mixed up my words so many times today. I really, it's like, I think I talk too fast or something. I don't know. Okay, so that's it. Um, my daughter, oh wait, my daughter is coming home this weekend. That's pretty darn exciting. Um, she's got a wedding to go to a week from Saturday. And she's going to come home this Saturday very late. Unfortunately, she scheduled it when her dad is going to be in Florida the whole week. And I'm going to be in Florida for three days. But um, she was planning to have some time away um, at her boyfriend's parents, which is about an hour drive from here. And they're gonna do that while we're gone. So what we're gonna do is I had called her and asked her if she would like to do mother-daughter spa day and maybe just go to this near town that just has treatment rooms. It's a spa, but it doesn't have like a hot tub and you know, things like that. And we'd each get massages. And she's like, sure, you know, I'll do that. And then she says, can my best friend Abby come? And I'm like, sure, Abby can come. I can make appointments for three. And then another text, Abby wants to know how much it costs. <laughs> so I'm like, tell Abby, I'll pick it up. And so the three, and then she's like, can we go to this other spa where they have the hot tubs and sit in the hot tub first? And I'm like, that's a half hour away and the massages are like $20 more, but yes, we can do that. So she is a 
getting spoiled rotten, but I, I hardly ever get to see her, and um, I just can't wait for the three of us. Uh, her friend Abby is like a second daughter to me, and I can't wait for the three of us just to sit in the hot tub for 45 minutes and then I'll go have our relaxing massages. And then on Tuesday, I leave Florida for three days, so um, pretty exciting week. So thank you for watching. I so appreciate it. Uh, my subscribers just continues to grow a little bit like bit, little bit by little and I appreciate you sharing or suggesting the channel to anybody who you think might be interested. Have a great weekend, have a great week and happy stitching.